Hi, so this is an um, example of how uh, SQL tables um, have been created. So, um, so I created this library database in uh, Visual Studio using a Visual Studio you can create um, databases, uh, many databases. So here, um, if you see, I've created a library database, and uh, so why? Yeah. Okay. So what you're seeing over here is um, a database diagram. So you see, um, book um, has been created, and um, so this is a list of books over here, and uh, ISBN number is a primary key, and um, then. Uh, these are all the copies of the book so the same book can have multiple copies and there is a foreign key of ISBN number from this table to book so ISBN number has to exist in book and that's what the foreign key constraint is for and if you move forward uh, this table lays a list of all librarians and every librarian gets an ID over you okay and here is a borrower a list of borrowers um, every borrower also gets an ID and we store his name address postal code phone number and so forth and whatever books are lended so we track who is a borrower so the borrower has to be in this table so that's what this uh, foreign key FK book lended borrower is this borrower has to be over here in borrower table okay and um, this librarian has to exist over the over here in the librarian table and um, this is a unique um, foreign key it is pointing itself which means the supervisor is also a librarian so if a supervisor id is mentioned that id okay so that id has to be uh, be be present in the as a librarian ID. So we are assuming that supervisor is a librarian ID, and that's why we mentioned it. So that's how this table. Uh, this is a database diagram, and you can see um, every table. So I say open table definition. So we have given a uh, n card seven. Um, you have knowing that there is a numeric uh, characters coming through, and there will be uh, seven uh, digit. And we have a title. We are giving a where care. Basically, it means um, the data of field size can vary uh, from zero to two hundred. So whatever it is, just take it and uh, don't allocate the full two hundred bytes. Uh, but whatever is been um, um, used. Uh, so if there's a you know any name like Roy, Roy will take three characters and store it uh, accordingly in the table. But uh, so it can accommodate uh, until 200 um, characters, and the same way I've given a good space for author and then the cost. Uh, we are allowing a 10-digit number with two decimal places included in it. So cost, uh, you know, maybe maximum thousand dollar, you know, maximum thousand dollars for a book, book. So if you say thousand dot fifty, it is thousand dollars and fifty cents. So that don't take uh, too many. Um, bytes and uh, that's why we have given maximum 10 it's a very big number uh, we're including all the decimals okay so that's what the book and so now let's say this time we'll okay we'll look at the design so here you see this is a combination of a primary key has been number and sequence both of them together uh, they uh, form a primary key together because um, and if you see the records So, um, so this cannot repeat basically. This is one copy of the same ISBN number. This is a second copy of the same ISBN number. Okay, so having said that, now you, you see that the date is stored in the DDMMYY format, but then that depends on, uh, so you know, um, usually it depends on the location, uh, your yes, settings um, uh, as to what you have said, the time zone. As and um, the database might accordingly create it according to its own um, 
defaults are based on where you are located. So the same table when probably seen in, through your database, let's say in US, um, it may be seen in the MMDD YY format. Um, so it depends on how the database has been, um, you know, where the database is accessed from. And uh, so let's see, book landed. So here you see that um, these are unique um, uh, primary keys using four keys. So this four keys has to be unique. So a borrow mark can come again, so it cannot form a primary key again. Um, he can check out two books. So again, this cannot be unique, but if he, um, he cannot check out the same copy of the same book on the same date and by the same person. So that is not possible and hence that's why this becomes a primary key. So here if you see the rules, so here we get all the rules, right? And same way, all these um, rules have been created for all the borrowers. Now library key in specific, it's a uh, if I see show the design so library ID right now it's a small hint because there are not too many librarians oh sorry what is this the library sorry I'm, I'm not looking at the library and I'm looking and the um, borrowers so open table definition yeah so it's a big end because um, um, there may be too many bar borrowers in the library so again you make a decision of how many ints you want to give a small int a big int uh, it depends on uh, how big um, database you want so um, you can always advance it to from a small int to a bigger int you know you can change the design without impacting the data itself but to move from big int to um, tiny int if you if you have added some rows and if you're moving change this to big int to small int uh, database will go ahead and do it for you but you might lose some data you know yeah big into small int um, is not a problem but from a to move from a small integer to a big integer um, you need to be careful as to what will you know the big integer cannot fit into a small int um, data field size so the number of bytes available is less so what I want to do mention is this identity specification and this is what auto increments if you make it as yes it will auto increment every time a new row is created you cannot uh, you know create a ins write an insert query with a library card number in it because this is identity it is um, unless you set the identity off so so there is a command set identity off and then you can go ahead and put it but again it has to be unique because um, it is a primary key so so identity specification every time I create a row it will um, automatically um, create a new value if you want to just test it so you see let's see and and okay so you see uh, it has created uh, the for this particular column uh, it has produced a value automatically so from 8 it has become 9 and if you delete this so I delete this row so that identity uh, is not repeated again so if I, this time if I do a different one okay so let's try so you see it's 10 so it basically definitely tells you that 9 was deleted so that so that's a nice uh, feature and uh, lastly we have all the librarians so show table data so yeah you you have an all over you we might uh, want to look at the indexes right so what all indexes have been done so oh, properties where are the indexes Uh, 
Okay. Okay, here's the diagram. So let's right click and look at the indexes. So there are three indexes uh, been defined. So here we mentioned the column name. So it's uh, you can select the column to be indexed. And uh, if you want multiple columns, you put a um, um, and yeah. Uh, So here the author has been, uh, this is a singular column uh, index which is author uh, index and um, so it is index variable author search. Similarly we want to index on title because people, um, the librarian might search you know for a particular book based on author title so you want to index it. So index what it does is basically the moment you mention this index you can think of a new table being created uh, which is uh, which is sorted out already for you so once uh, so it's a different table so every time uh, your main table uh, which is in this case book this gets updated the index table also gets updated and it uh, get arranged in a sorted manner now uh, how it gets arranged in a sorted manner may differ uh, they have a different way of um, arranging the data but it is sorted and uh, the algorithm will search it out for you based on uh, what sort algorithm uh, and what uh, search algorithm the um, SQL server is using so but index uh, you can assume, um, you can um, understand that it is the, all the rows are in a sorted manner so we uh, all the columns are not there in the index table so what is there in this particular table would be author in this particular table would be title and this particular will be the primary key so that's why primary key is by default indexed because uh, it is unique and we need to search it out and the table um, that's the key that we usually use in the queries like select star from a uh, table where uh, column name is equal to you know ISBN so you see the ISBN number is here so and the primary key automatically creates this uh, index for you and uh, the other index is something that uh, I have added so that uh, whatever has to be uh, searched out uh, is we create another table so you see for a book we have one main table the prior the, you know the, the, the records here and two index tables so totally we have three tables for book and how many tables do we have here okay so book copy here you have two tables uh, this one um, there's an ISBN number record in the book copy so sometimes you may want to search for a uh, book copy within this table using the ISBN number and that's why it's been given over here but here if you see the columns um, this is a dual based primary key so the index table will have two columns so if you're searching where ISBN number is equal to X and sequence is equal to Y it's going to use this particular index so the SQL server would be intelligent to know which index table to search in for based on how you have indexed and uh, indexing since it's sorted it returns the search quickly using its uh, intelligent sort algorithms and uh, so those are two tables here there are three tables in the same way book landed right and how many tables are you so So three plus two, five and five and book landed at three. So this became eight tables. And then this got only one, nine tables. And oh, and five tables more so 14 tables so we have 14 tables created out of this uh, five you know five tables um, so five tables are uh, the main tables but the, the index tables there are around nine tables of index tables so when we decide uh, how many index tables we need to create uh, it depends on uh, how much data is there how much uh, uh, database size we can fit in um, so if you uh, do not have too much of data and too much of uh, um, 
table so you can um, um, define that many indexes but when we have let's say million rows and uh, let's say we have uh, 200 tables and 200 tables it becomes thousand index tables you know that time it can be a problem so there can be so that's a performance problem with the indexes so index are fast but it occupies space and that can be an issue right okay so let's go back and let's see some um, SQL files so DDL so data definition language so data definition language is usually your uh, you know the commands like all the table create tables anything that creates defines is a data definition language anything that modifies your rows like insert a uh, alt insert update delete you know those are your data manipulation statements so, so what it does is basically the this is an auto generated so I, I can just show it to you in some uh, some steps so I just say publish to provider and then the wizard comes in these days everything is so easy right so we create the this is a database we script all the objects so sometimes we just want to only one table to be you know scripted because uh, we don't want to rewrite if the database is already existing so if if the if it's for the first time you're creating a database script all the objects but second time if uh, the database has already been pushed into production uh, people have started using it there's a you know there's a customer data in that you know library data already you cannot go ahead and recreate everything you know it will destroy whatever data is there earlier so in that case uh, you have to be careful when you implement your database and decide accordingly okay so it says script to file and um, if I say script to file um, you know it shows all the, your um, commands uh, to create the database as well as it creates the rows command so uh, it creates both the DDL statements and DML statements and if you say publish to shared hosting provider it can connect to some other database and um, automatically create uh, the tables over there and with all the rows so it happens in a cloud environment let's say uh, we have a database on a cloud and we, this is local testing we're doing once we're done over here we go to the publish uh, shared hosting provider and provide the cloud database um, information and uh, we can transfer over there automatically okay so we don't want to do that uh, step now we have already done so initially it goes and drops everything you see a drop table and um, um, it tries to drop the constraints uh, before it starts to create so it just basically cleans the database before it starts and once it is clean and uh, then it goes ahead and creates the tables and then it puts a constraint primary key right then it inserts four rows for the library and table you see so it, these are your DML statements and the above one was DDL statements so here you go and so here you see they have created a um, non-clustered index over here so there's clustered index and non-clustered index so that defines um, you know how it will be uh, stored um, on your hard disk so sometimes we have multiple machines and uh, multiple you know uh, a server being distributed uh, like a database being distributed across a, across a multiple servers so you know so that time we need to um, um, make sure we try tell uh, do we want this clustered or is it okay if we non cluster it you know so non clustering will add some um, or do you know some cost so it's like you know we have to search different number of places 
so uh, don't go by this definition though uh, just check up um, I think that's what it means um, I don't remember okay so you see uh, so essentially it tries to create a table and create uh, your Oh, clustered index, non clustered index. And that's how it is done. So if you run this over here, first you can index usually we or oh, it tries to since I'm checking the syntax, it says first it wants to collect connect to the database. I can see library. So this is basically validating the syntax. If there's any syntax error, it will throw it to me to over here. And if it's okay, I just execute it. And it'll execute. So if I execute it, it will delete everything. It will create all the index and constraints and create any, any rows and the whole database will be created again. So we don't want to do that. So that's how uh, this um, um, database